Welcome back to this special edition of Yahoo Finance Live. I am here in New York City's Times Square for the reopening of Broadway tonight. And seven new plays are opening this fall, all by black writers, including the highly anticipated Thoughts of a Colored Man, which begins previews, by the way, October 1st. I'm delighted to be joined by one of the play's producers, Brian Moreland. Brian, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having hot, me. hot, beautiful day in Times Square. <laughs> so talk to me about the premise of the play. Mm -hmm. I know it takes place in one day in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and how these seven black men sort of interact on that one day without giving too much away. Tell us a little bit more about the play and why you felt passionate about bringing it to the stage. Oh, absolutely. So Keenan Scott II sent me this play about six years ago while I was living in London. I read it and had never read anything like this before. A play about seven black men growing up and living in Brooklyn, set over 24 hours, discussing their greatest joys and their greatest fears. There's a whole lot of laughter, all based in slam poetry and music intertwined to tell this story of thoughts of a colored man. A live black and thriving in the 21st century. Talk about what it's been like to stage a play during the pandemic and the mm. challenges, including the cost of having to do that, because I know that it also adds to the overall cost. Absolutely. You know, COVID, COVID is not a, um, a cheap pandemic. Let's say that <laughs> much. It is not a cheap pandemic. But I will say that it's been very, very fortunate. It has been challenging. I mean, we test twice a week. Um, we are always in our masks. And I have to say that it's been rewarding because we know at least we are all safe. We're asking the same thing of our audiences as they come back to Broadway to do the exact same thing, to be vaccinated and or present a negative test at the door and wear your mask through the performance. What have pre-ticket sales been like? How are things looking? They are looking great. Oh, I, Broadway great. is 100% back. Our box office is booming. I am thrilled to say that. Come down to the Golden Theater and see <laughs> Thoughts of a Colored Man. It is wonderful. Talk to me about diversity on Broadway. Yeah. It's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Do you think that both on the stage and behind the scenes, it's starting to look more like the country, not just in terms of casting, but in terms of the stories that are being told? Absolutely. 100% is changing. I'm really thrilled to say I'm also a member of the Board of Governors for the Broadway League. We just recently hired Janine Scott, who is our Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Officer, who is bringing diversity all through Broadway, communicating with all of the shows. On stage and off stage, the shows are changing their teams and their team members. It's really, really thrilling. I looked most recently at the announcement for Chicago, mm. and I see that they have Bianca Medikin, Ana Villafonte, Paolo Schott, and Lilius White. Uh, it's amazing to have that much diversity sitting in one show. Let's talk about diversity in the audience, mm. because uh, the people who buy Broadway tickets are overwhelmingly white. Yep. Uh, the last figure I saw, less than 4% of those who buy Broadway tickets are people of color. Mm -hmm. How are you working to change that dynamic? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, one of the initiatives through the audience development side of the Broadway League is a program called Black to Broadway, which is a program designed to engage with the black community to make sure that the theater remains open and accessible for all people to come. And one of the things that we're doing with Black to Broadway um, is coming up this actual weekend with the uh, Playbill's Curtain Up event. We're having right. a whole panel with the black playwrights to discuss this diversity initiative. We have ticket prices that are geared primarily to people of color to really make sure that it's accessible and people can buy those tickets at whatever price point is good for their household. When it comes to investing in Broadway, mm -hmm. it's not for the faint of heart, <laughs> um, but how much of the money coming into Broadway mm -hmm. is diverse money, meaning it is coming from a diverse pool of people? I like that question. I can't speak for all shows, but I can say this. Thoughts of a Colored Man has the most diverse investor pool ever. Um, Sheila Johnson, co-founder of BET and the Sally Manor Resort, is one of our primary investors in Thoughts of a Colored Man, along with a lot of other diverse money, new money, is sitting inside Thoughts of a Colored Man. And I think it's going to be a trend to open the doors so that all colors are represented on Broadway. Now, you're one of six African-American producers on Broadway right now. That was my last count. <laughs> Why do you think that is, and, and how do you start to up that number? This, exactly what we're doing right now, communicating, right? Um, being one of six black lead producers for Broadway, um, it's an honor. It's an honor and also daunting, right? It's a daunting task. I think that what happens is that we don't think about a lot of careers that are available to all of us. And I think that producing is one of those careers that people don't think immediately, hey, I'd like to be a producer for Broadway. So we move forward.
Um, just before the pandemic, mm -hmm. I know you were working on a show called Blue, mm -hmm. and you were trying to find it a home here on Broadway. Mm -hmm. When that didn't work out, you were going to take it to the Apollo mm -hmm. and bring Broadway up to Harlem. Mm -hmm. Tell us, because you had big names there, Leslie Uggams, uh, Felicia Rashad involved in the, in the yeah. show. What's happening with that show? What's the status? Excellent question. We are just we are just looking at the calendar right now. That's all. Um, coming out of coming out of the pandemic, being closed for 18 months, um, the Apollo Theater itself is getting ready to undergo some renovations. Um, you may have read that our wonderful director Felicia Rashad just became um, the department head at Howard University, and so it's a wonderful time. But it's a lot of calendar scheduling. So we're going to do a deep dive into the calendar and figure out when we can do it but it is still on track. That's really exciting, and I look forward to seeing Blue. Thank you. What are you most excited about now that Broadway, it, it, the curtain's going back up? This, look around, Times Square. I'm excited, I'm excited that we're gonna walk down the streets and these are gonna be filled again with people. Yeah. I'm excited that the audiences are flocking back. Our box offices are booming. We are wearing our masks and doing it safely. I'm excited to sit in the theater again and just experience the stories that people have written and poured their hearts, souls, and talents into. Very excited. Of course, we don't want to say it out loud, but I'm going to. The, the, the possibility that there might have to be a partial shutdown, mm -hmm. a full shutdown. Is there a contingency plan in place when you think about your shows and coming back to Broadway? You know what's interesting? People have asked me that question. They always say, you know, are you being cautiously optimistic? No, I'm 100% optimistic. I'm optimistic because Broadway waited a very, very long time. We waited a long time because of the, because of the science, because of the vaccines, to make sure that when we opened our doors, that we could do it safely. And I have to say, to this date, as we speak right now, we haven't had a single positive test case or breakthrough case um, for uh, our audience members just yet that we can pinpoint just so. So it's a, it's a good thing that we're doing it safely. Absolutely. And have you found any pushback from the theater community in terms of sticking to these COVID protocols? No. no. People want to get back to work. People want to get back to work, and we know that we're doing it for your safety and for mine. And is there any particular show, of course, outside of your own, that you're excited to see this season? You know what? I am. I have to be really honest. I'm a huge Lion King fan. Um, oh, I will yeah. be there this evening watching Disney's The Lion King um, to see Circle of Life and see that Pride Rock go around again. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a little child tonight on the inside, sitting at, at, the, at the Minskoff Theater. Oh, have fun. What a classic. Yeah. I wish I was going with you. All right, Brian Moreland, <laughs> Thoughts of a Colored Man. Again, it opens in previews October 1st, opens for real on Halloween. On Halloween. October 31st. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having All me. Right.